All right, everybody with me? 1.5, we're gonna do the second part. Last week we talked about combinations, putting things together, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, right? We had domain restrictions when there was something in the denominator that we had to worry about. We're gonna talk today a little bit about domain as well. I'm not gonna get too much into it, but the, we're gonna focus on something called compositions of functions. It's different than just adding and subtracting. Compositions of functions can be written two ways, right? That doesn't say fog. That is not a multiplication sign. A open circle in between two letters like this with an X or a number, it's a composition. What you're doing is taking one function and plugging it into the other one. So you can see it written as F O G or where it's F and then a parenthesis and then a G and then the X. What I want you guys to kind of take from this. Write this down. You want to work inside out. You're going to start with whatever is closest to X. What I mean by that. When it's written as FOG of X, they're telling you to take this G function and plug it into the F. Same thing here. They're telling you to take the G, plug it into the F. I'll show you what that means in a second. <clears throat> But whatever is closest to x is the number, you take that function and then plug it into the one that's on the outside. So let me show you. All right, now we're gonna do a couple different ways like we did the other day. We're gonna do some where it's left in terms of x and some where they want you to use numbers. So how do you know if I should have a number in my answer or if I should have an x in my answer? How can you look at that and tell me? Because there's an x right here. That's saying leave this in terms of X. Do you see the difference between A and B? What are they asking you to do in A? They're telling you to take the G function and put it where? Into the F. In B, they're telling you to take the F function and put it into where? Into G. So let's watch how this works, all right? Let's write them down. Your F function... is X plus 2. And your G function is 4 minus X squared. So what letter A is asking you to do? It's asking you to take this function right here and plug it in to where there's X's in the F function. You're taking one and putting it into the other. I think it's a really good idea to write the problem down like this and actually circle what you're doing where you're plugging it in. So I'm gonna take my F function and instead of X, what am I going to write down? What am I plugging into the F function? Four minus X squared, good. And then you continue writing the F function. So it's plus two. And then you just combine like terms. What can I combine? Four and two, what do I get? Negative X squared plus six. You're just taking one and plugging it in to the other one. So the next one, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to write them down again. F of X is X plus 2. Your G of X is 4 minus X squared. What is this question asking you to do? Take this whole F function and put it where? Into right there. So write the problem out. You have 4 minus, instead of x, what am I writing? x plus 2. And then I'm going to finish the, it's squared. You're taking one and plugging it into the other one. And then this just becomes algebra, guys. You have 4 minus, what does it mean to have x plus 2 quantity squared? How many x plus 2s do I have? 2, good. So you're going to write x plus 2 times x plus 2. Let's FOIL that. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2 is 4, right? So you have 4 minus, combine like terms and everything in the middle here, x squared plus 2x plus 4. Yeah, I don't know why. Thank you. 
And then what do I have to do with that minus sign? I have to distribute it here, here, and here, right? So this is four minus x squared minus four x minus four. Combine like terms. What do we start off with? Negative x squared, good. Minus four x. Now what happens with a positive four and a negative four? They cancel. So it's just have just that. You're taking one, plugging it into the other. So now I'm going to do the same kind of problem. How is this one different? It has a three, it has a number. So what are you supposed to do here? How did I tell you guys to work? Inside out. So what do we do first? We're going to plug in three in the F function. Okay, so I'm going to evaluate my F function. So F of X is X plus two. So I'm going to plug a three in. So three plus two is what? Five. Five, okay. What do you think I'm going to do with that five now? I'm going to plug it into G. You work from the inside out. I took the three, I plugged into the F, and I got the number five. And now I'm going to take that and plug it into G. So what is my G function? Four minus X squared. Yeah? So it's four minus five squared. Four minus 25 is 21. So when you have a number, it's easier. It's easier to, to kind of compute and to understand. You just take that number, whatever is closest on the inside, you plug it into that function, find your answer, and then plug it into the other one. <clears throat> We're going to do more practice with this. We shall do more practice. Now, there's going to be times when they ask you for the domain of a function. And I kept the, the explanation here so you guys could see. Domain means what values can I use for x? When we were talking about combinations of functions, the problem was can't have a zero in the denominator, right? So that was where our domain issue came in. When you have compositions, when you're taking one and putting it to the other, you have to figure out if there's any issues, if there's any problems. So let's think about f of x. Let's look at this one. Do I have any domain restrictions here? Can I plug in a positive number, square it, and subtract 9? Any positive number. Can I do that? Yes. What about a negative number? Yeah. What about 0? Everything's okay there? Okay. So my domain for this function would just be negative infinity to positive infinity. I can use anything in the world. Do I have a problem here? What can you not have underneath the... You can't have a negative underneath the square root, right? Because what happens? It becomes imaginary. So you have domain restrictions here. You can't just use any number in the world. So how do we figure out what our domain restriction is? Well, what does the number have to be greater than or equal to if it's underneath the square root to get a real answer? It has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to say, okay, I have 9 minus x squared has to be greater than or equal to zero. If you have a square root, if you have a cube root, an odd root doesn't matter because you're going to have negatives underneath. But if you have a square root, you have to see what would make something become imaginary underneath. So how would I solve this? How do we solve square roots, guys? <laughs> square both sides, okay. So 9 minus x squared greater than or equal to 0. Now what? Subtract 9, okay. Negative x squared, greater than or equal to negative 9. Divide by negative 1, good. What happens when we divide by negative 1? What happens to inequality sign? Good, flips, good. So x squared less than or equal to 9, and now what? Square root. What goes in front of my square root? Plus or minus what? 3. Okay, so now you guys are like, well, what, what does that mean? Right, inequalities give us a range, right? It's not an equal sign. It gives us a range. 
So think about this. Domain makes us think a little bit. Let's see what our domain would be. Where are our restrictions? Where, what, what's not going to work? Pick a number. Okay, pick a number over here. Anything over here. Negative 5. Okay, so let's plug in negative 5 here. So I have 9 minus negative 5 squared, right? So square root of 9 minus 25. What happens when I say 9 minus 25? I get a negative, right? That's not going to work. Nothing out there will work. Let's pick something in between negative 3 and 3. How about 0? Because that's easy. If I take the square root of 9 minus 0 squared, does that work? Yeah, I can take that, square root of 9. Pick something over here, bigger than 3. 4, okay. So I have 9 minus 4 squared. Square root of 9 minus 16. It's going to give me what kind of a number? Negative. So where are the only numbers that will satisfy this equation? In between negative 3 and positive 3. Does it include those two? Yes. So that's why it's in brackets. If you do not have a square root, if you just have any number raised to any power, whatever, your domain is going to be all real numbers. You can plug in anything positive, anything negative, or zero. Where the problem lies is if you have a denominator or if you have a radical. You just got to check for that. We'll practice that a little more, but I just want you guys to see that. <clears throat> Make sense? All right, let's do these last few, and then I'll give you guys your quizzes back. Okay. So f function is 2x plus 3, correct? What's your g function? 1 half of x minus 3. What's another way you can write 1 half times something? 0.5. Divided, okay, 0.5 or what? Divided by 2. Okay, just so you guys see that. So a and b are asking you to do two different things. What is a asking you to do? Circle it. Take the g function and do what? Plug it into f. What is b asking you to do? Take the f and do what? Plug it into g. Should my answer have x's in it or numbers? X's because it's in terms of x. Good. So let's do the first one. We'll do it in blue. I'm going to take my g function and plug it in to the f. So nothing changes in the f function except the x variable. So I have two times. Instead of x, what am I writing? One half x minus 3, right? Then what? Plus 3. Perfect. Now we go back to algebra 1, guys. How do I simplify this? Okay, distribute. What is 2 times 1 half? It cancels, good. You're just multiplying those two together. Same as, remember, if this was divided by 2, they would cancel out, right? Same thing. So then what happens? I have x minus 3 plus 3. So your, your value is just x. That's okay. It's perfectly okay if stuff cancels out. Not a big deal. All right, now let's go the other way. I'm going to take the f function and plug it where? Into the g. So I'm going to take 1 half times, instead of x, what am I writing? 2x plus 3. Then what? Minus 3. Okay. What happens here, guys? What's, what's 1 half times 2x? Just x? Okay. What happens with x plus 3 minus 3? Okay, so you just end up with x. Do I need to distribute it to both? Yeah. You... When they cancel and you have x, just you end up with just x. What you've just proven here, which you guys don't care about, is f of g is the same as g of f. That sometimes will happen. When you take one, plug it in the other, and everything cancels just except for an x, that's fine. We're not going to ask you to do anything like that on the test. What we're going to ask you to do is something like this. f of g of 3. 
or f of g of x. To understand, if you have this, what does that mean to do? Plug what? Plug 3 into the G, get your answer, and then do what? Plug that one into F. What is this one asking you to do? Take that whole G function and plug it into F. You need to understand the difference between those two things. Does that make sense? Yes, like if you have, say it's like f of x equals x squared plus 1, and g of x is 3x minus 4. All right, if they want this, you're going to take 3 and plug it in right here. So 3 times 3 minus 4, 9 minus 4 is what? 5. Now you take the 5, because you got 5 for this answer, and you plug it into the F one. So it'd be five squared plus one, so 26. So tomorrow, I'll come back to that one in one second. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you guys practice on this. You guys have web assigned. It's not due until, I don't even know when I made it due. Maybe Thursday or Friday. You don't have to do it tonight. What I want you to do tonight is to look at the test review and come in tomorrow and say, hey, I don't, can you go over this? I have a question on this. I'm going to give you your quizzes back in a second. But it's really important that you guys look at the test review tonight and come in with questions tomorrow. You'll have time on Wednesday in class to work on the web assigns that are due, that sort of a thing. I'm just trying to make sure that I get questions answered from you before I leave. Yes? Yes.